You, whichever one you want, brother. <laughs> Turn both on if you want. <laughs> All right. I uh, would like to say good evening to you. It is good to be at the Lord's house. Um, I've been anticipating tonight's service since about a quarter of five this morning. Um, two weeks ago, I told you all that I would be uh, preaching on God's battle plan tonight. And this morning, about a quarter of five, he showed me what it was. And uh, if I'm going to be preaching on it, it's good for him to show me that. Uh, you know, it makes it a little easier on me to do the things I have to do. Uh, I hope, and I know they're going to try to video part of it. I don't know how much of it they're going to video, because I'm going to throw the curve after a while. But uh, at any rate, it is good to be in the Lord's house. Before we get started tonight, there are some things um, that I need to... Uh, at any rate, there are some things that I would like to pass along to you. I um, would like for you to uh, continue to pray for Cassie's uncle. Um, we went out to the hospital today to chat with him. Got an opportunity to share a little bit with him, but um, at this point, as far as I know, He's still unsaved, and uh, he had pancreatic cancer. They had surgery yesterday, and uh, he came through the surgery well, but uh, he still needs to touch from the war. Also, want you to please, um, and if you've been on the church's Facebook page um, at all, uh, you'll know that uh, Sister Arella went home this war uh, early in the week. You know, and it obviously in this case it's heaven gain. Um, she was a great woman in the Lord, uh, a great mom and grandma, and I, I know that their family tonight uh, deeply desires your all's prayers. Um, and uh, I know that uh, there, there's not anything that the preacher is able to say, there'll not be anything that anybody will be able to do that will fill the void that's in their heart um, because she held such a great place there. Um, but please, down through the next couple of days, the calling hours are tomorrow night from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock at the kid funeral home, and then the funeral is Friday, I think at 11, and I don't remember that time exactly, and Chris was out there, so if you need to know when that is, you can either get on the church's Facebook page, the obituary lumbar, or you can ask Crystal. Uh, but please do uh, lift that family up in your prayers as well. Uh, also, want to pray. Uh, talk to Brother Mike today. They are on their way south, but before he went south, um, he went to visit a, uh, a lady that uh, he had been acquainted with for a long time. Her and her husband, um, I think her husband's name is Winston and her name is Jan, if I remember correctly, but he went today and had prayer with them, and uh, she has assured him that she's ready to go home with the Lord, and that the Lord is her Savior, but they call in hospice for her as well. So please pray for that family. Um, and I'm forgetting one. Whatever it is, whenever it comes to my mind, I'll stop what I'm doing and tell you all what it is. But I just would like you all to pray for all of those um, things as well. So, uh, that being said, it is, again, good to be in the Lord's house, excited about what he's going to do tonight. And uh, if for nobody else but me, uh, I can't hardly wait to get to where we're going. So, that being said, let's bow our head a minute. We'll have a word of prayer so we can get started on the journey. Father, tonight, uh, God, one more time, Lord, we are so grateful, God, because you've been so gracious to us. God, we thank you, Father, tonight, Lord, for your promise. God, thank you tonight for your spirit. Father, we pray tonight for Brother Todd's family. God, we do ask you that you'd be an ever-present friend to them. And, Lord, you'd surround them and allow 
them, Father, to feel your peace. Uh, God, no matter how much that we feel like that, we may be ready for a loved one's crossing. Father, still when it happens, our hearts are heavy. God, I pray that uh, you would minister, Father, to their needs. Uh, bless them down through the next little bit of time. God, that for a moment they might get a glimpse of glory and understand that because the rel is there, heaven's a better place. Father, we pray tonight for those that are not able to be here. God, them that are sick in body. Father, that you might raise them up. Father, we pray special tonight, God, for Brother Larry. Uh, Lord, I know that, uh, God, ever since he decided to step up and step out, God, there's been an attack. Uh, but, Lord, I, I pray that you'd strengthen him and, and, God, he'd be able to take his place in your house. Uh, Lord, for Ed tonight, God, we pray that you might save him, touch his body, and raise him up. Lord, for the couple that Brother Mike went to visit, Lord, thank you for their testimony. God, I pray that you be with them in their hour of need. Father, bless the service tonight. God, above all else, Father, help us to see those of us that are gathered in your house tonight. Lord, you've got a battle plan. Help us to understand what it is, everything that's accomplished tonight. Father, we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let us stand to our feet. And uh, one of the hardest things for us to, to understand is just outside those doors for, for people. Their lives are unraveling. And they need you, church. They, they need uh, our young people that are in the back. Understand that all around you, there are people that need you to be real for God. More than you can imagine. They need something that they can hold on to. They need somebody that they know can get a hold of God. So please, take that prayer request to heart. But understand that I believe with my whole heart. And it doesn't matter to me whether you're 10 or 110 if you're still here. God's got a reason for you being here. He's got a purpose for your life. When that purpose is fulfilled, He'll take you out of here. Until then, we ought to be about the Father's business. And people need us to be real. So you all take a minute and shake hands one with another. Tell somebody you love them, would you? <laughs>
says in Ephesians chapter 6. You know, as Andy uh, two weeks ago now uh, mentioned about a battle plan, get a hug. instantly it brought my mind to a uh talk about the uh, armor of God. I just kind of want to read about that real quick. I want to start at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not with against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to be withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the hem helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer, prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching there thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The next two verses that I want to read, I'm going to kind of change it up a little bit. I don't think it goes against the Spirit, against the Bible, but I, I think this is a prayer for all of us, the, a prayer that we all can say, and for us, that utterance may be given unto us, that we may open our mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which we are ambassador in bonds, that there, therein we may speak boldly as we all to speak.
I, I'm in the middle of the computer. I don't know what's going on in Houston. And some of you all may be aware, some of you all may not be aware, but there is a group of pastors in Houston now. Houston has elected a, a woman that is a lesbian for a governor or mayor or whatever it is that, that she does. But now they have subpoenaed the messages of the preachers that have preached against that situation and against homosexuality and against sin, if you will, because I got to tell you what, if they can get to the point that they can silence the gospel message, it doesn't matter where that you draw the line and it doesn't matter which sin that you call it, pretty soon they'll be saying, you can't tell anybody that they're living against God. I got to tell you, we're living, we're living in time much like Gideon was in. The Bible says that the children of Israel were in great trouble. The angel of the Lord came and sat down and watched Gideon and watched what Gideon was doing. And I, I look at our church and I look at the folks in it and, and I look at how God is beginning to stir the hearts of people and I wonder whether or not that God's angel is just camped out at the church watching to see what we are going to do with what we got before God does something great. Now, I've asked and I've asked and I've asked and I've asked. How many of you all tonight want God to do something incredible in your life? Amen. Amen. Now, now, here's the thing. How many of y'all are willing to let him? Amen. All right. Then that being said, and I, I Brother Shad, Brother Rob, Brother Jim, Brother Brandon, I'd like you all to go out first. And uh, we've already got some chairs set up or, or that are out there, but we're going to need more than that for the crowd we've got tonight. So if you all would grab some of the wooden chairs, take them out there. I'll give you a minute to get them set up, and then we'll file out that way. Now, listen to me, because I want now, young folks, listen to your pastor. Hello up here. Young folks, listen to me. When we get outside, when we leave this sanctuary, we go down the hallway and we go out into the parking lot, we're still in church. I want you to get that. That's, it's not a time to sit out there and play on your phones. It's not a time to sit out there and, and, and it's church. So I want you to understand, just because we're going out of the sanctuary, I believe that the next little bit of time, if we'll get a hold of the truth that God's got in His Word, it's going to change who we are. I believe it's going to change who the church is. I believe it's going to change my family. And i, I got to tell you, and I, I, whether for tonight, maybe, the message that I'm about to preach is just for this preacher. And if it is, then I'm okay with that. Because if my family changes because of what I'm about to preach, I'll be all right with that. Now, i got to tell you, if your family's changed because of what I'm about to preach, I'll be all right with that too. And you say, well, preacher, what are you talking about? Well... Tonight, as I was on my way out, my brother Johnny was on my way in, or his way in. They were going in to see Randall. And uh, as I pulled out, I stopped, and he backed up, and we chatted for just a little bit, but it was obvious that I was on my way to church. And it was obvious that he's, he isn't. I said that to say this. We got a lot of family that we're passing on the way, and they're going the wrong, now listen to me, they're going the wrong direction. And it is time for God's people to stand in the gap and make up the hedge and get serious about this thing that we call salvation. You say, well, preacher, you're too serious. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, for that man, for that man that tried to kill himself, if he had succeeded in that, I, 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 there would be no message the preacher could preach because his eternity would have been determined. So while we can determine their eternity, we want to preach with everything we've got. Rob read the scripture a while ago, and he said, I, I think it's all right to change this and, and pray for us, not just for me, but pray for us that we might open up our mouths and speak boldly, speak boldly the word of God. So I want you all to begin to pray in earnest 
You are the nucleus of the church. And I want you to begin to pray in earnest that God would give you the ability to open up your mouth and to speak the word of God boldly like you've never done before. And I know that's a tall order. But then I think God wants to deliver our people. I believe God's about to send revival. And if, it's going to, if he's going to send it, it's going to start with us. It's going to start with us. So we'll go out and go through the fellowship hall. And uh, make your way out into the parking lot. And I know, I know that when you get out there, it is going to be so dark that you're going to have a hard time seeing one another. And I am aware of that. But that is exactly why we're going out there. So if you would, let us take a moment and head out that way. <laughs> won't be able to see it. Okay. Rosie, honey, I've got you a chair. How is it out there, Jim? It's dark. It's dark. That's good. Can you call it? That is exactly. You see three chairs out there. That's good. That is exactly how I want it to be. Are you still um, are you taping? Really? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> that thing's probably not going to work in the dark, Bill. Oh, yeah, it will. Thank you, Sissy. <clears throat> Shut them lights out, Brandon. <laughs> That's all right. They'll go out. In, uh, He's probably perfectly fine in the, in the sanctuary right now. I want, in a moment, when those headlights go down, and I'm sure they're on a timer, <laughs> you did turn it off, didn't you, Brandon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you lock your car in the wall? Yeah, see? There you go. Have we got everybody except Leanne? She'll be here directly. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> now, I want you all to look around you. Yes. And uh, I want you to understand the reason that I brought you out here is because I want to get you outside of the walls of the sanctuary. You see, when I thought about Gideon, and I thought about what that God had told him, God had told him, he said, Gideon, I, I want to use you for my glory. I, I, I want to use you, Gideon, to fulfill my purpose. So I brought you out here in the middle of the parking lot, in the middle of the dark tonight, because I want you to understand that God wants to use every one of you that are gathered here tonight for his glory. But there are some things that I found in the scripture when I, I began to read about this, and I told you that God's got a battle plan, but I gotta tell you before I get into it, when I get to the battle plan, you're gonna tell me the same thing Gideon thought, that the battle plan preacher makes absolutely no sense. Now, let me tell you what God told Gideon before we ever get to God's battle plan. God told Gideon to gather up the men, and they gathered up some 32,000. But then God looked at Gideon, 
And he said, although the Midianites are on the hillside and as the sand of the sea, and they're more than you can number, Gideon, you've got too many men. So he told them, all of you, now I want you to listen to what your preacher is about to tell you. He told Gideon, Gideon, all of them that are afraid, all of them that are fearful, Gideon, tell them it'll be all right if they go back home. Now, I don't want none of you to go home because I need all of you. But I can tell you that the battle that we're in is not for the fearful. The battle that we're in, although the enemy rages, if you understand tonight that God gives us the victory before the fight ever begins, you'll not have to be afraid. I, I've talked with people and, and when they think about, and, and if you all raise your hand tonight, I can see some of you all because unless you all have noticed, how many of you all have figured out in the last few minutes that your eyes are beginning to adjust to the darkness? Has anybody figured that out yet? Yeah, I, yeah. see what's happening is, is that when we get into the darkness, if we stay there long enough, our eyes begin to adjust to the darkness. I don't believe that God wants us to get accustomed to the dark. But when I, I began to think, God told Gideon, he said, Gideon, you've got 32,000 men in your army. Everybody that's afraid, tell them they can go back home. The Bible said that 22,000 of them. Now, in case you wondered, that's two out of three. So they lost, if you would begin to look, they, they lost two people and they kept one. Two out of three of them decided that the task was too large, that the enemy was too great, and that God could not provide. So they were afraid, and they went back home. Left Gideon with 10,000 to go against the armies of the Midianites. I told Linda today, I was thinking about the scripture that talks about that the Bible said, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that walk thereon. But narrow is the gate that leads to glory, and few there be that find it. So I've got to tell you guys, in this battle that we're in, I want you to understand we're outnumbered. I mean, we are. That's what the Bible says. But even being outnumbered, we've got God on our side. So if you've got God on your side, you ought to just... Feel good that God is on your side. And you know the great thing about tonight, I can't see your all's expression. You all could be looking at the preacher like the preacher has lost it, but I am telling you, the church is outnumbered. We're living in a country that they will defend everything that there is except the gospel message, and it's going to get worse. But God told Gideon, he said, you've got 10,000 left, Gideon. And now that you've got 10,000, he said, so that people will know that I am God. He said, you've still got too many. Now, I got to tell you by now, if I'm Gideon, I've got to be thinking that I'm one of them ones that should have went home. Because God told Gideon, he said, I know you got 10,000. Gideon, but, but you've got too many. So he told him, he said, take them down to the pool and let them get water. And, and Gideon, I'll tell you what I want you to do. So they all went down. They got a drink. Gideon watched. God watched. And when it was all said and done, God told Gideon, he said, Gideon, them that laid on their belly, them that laid down and picked up the water and begun to drink, you keep them. But everybody that knelt down on their knees and began to drink, you send them home. And I began to think about that, what it meant, why God might have told Gideon to choose them people. And then I began to think about the position that they were in. If they were down on their knees, they were vulnerable. When they were looking down at the water, they were vulnerable to attack. But what God wanted and what I think that God still wants, even in our churches, is God wants people that are spiritually aware. I don't think that God wants us to come to, and, and by the way, I gotta tell you what, I like to have great church. I like to have good singing, great singing. I like to have great testimonies. I like to have great preaching. I enjoy all of those things. 
but I think that God requires us to be spiritually aware of what's going on. So God said to Gideon, them that got down on their belly and watched while they drunk, you keep them. And the number of them, the Bible said, was 300. Now, if you're keeping track, that means we went from an army of 32,000 people down to 300. And God said, now I can do something. Now I can work because I've got it down, Gideon, to where when you do what you're going to do, Gideon, nobody will question whether or not it's me. Because you see, the Midianites were all over the hillside. God began to speak to Gideon and he told Gideon, now, now listen to me, he told Gideon, if you are afraid, he said, you go down to the camp of the Midianites, you sneak down there and you listen to what they're talking about. And what they was talking about is that the God of Gideon was going to defeat them. And by the way, when they heard that, Gideon went away encouraged. Now, let me ask you all a question tonight before I get to the thrust of the message. How many of you all believe that the God of Gideon is going to deliver our community into our hands? Amen. Now, we, we look at, I got to tell you what, we, we got 100 folk, 120 folk that are coming to the church now, and, and we're outnumbered. Delaware outnumbers us by great numbers. Marion outnumbers us by great numbers, but I still believe that God is greater than the numbers that are in Delaware and Marion, and so God can bring them to the church. But now, here's God's battle plan. Told you I was gonna to get to that, and I want you to understand what God wants of you. Now, before I tell you what it is, and it ain't gonna make no sense to none of you, but before I tell you what God's battle plan is, let me ask you, if God if God speaks to your heart tonight and God reveals that this is his battle plan for your life, how many of you all are willing to follow God's battle plan? Uh, see, now I, I, I can see hands, but I don't know if everyone is up. You all, you all say, man, I like this in the dark because the preacher can't tell whether I'm participating or not. It doesn't matter to the preacher because God can see through the darkness. So God knows whether or not your hand is up or not. But let me get to God's battle plan because you all have said now that if indeed God speaks to you, if God tells you that this is his battle plan, you be willing to follow it. I, I begin to think about Gideon. Now he's got 300 people. Now the armies are out there. God told Gideon, he said, Gideon, I want you to take the 300 that you've got. He said, I want you to go against the Midianites. He said, Gideon, there are some things that you need to know. He said, I want to split you up, Gideon. He said, split you into three companies, and that's a hundred in each company. And he said, I, I want you to surround the camp of the Midianites. Now, I got to tell you, you cannot surround the camp of the Midianites with 300 people. But God separated them. And I got a notion, as they began to get separated and they looked to one another, they wondered whether or not that their leader, Gideon, had been talking with God. They wondered whether or not that Gideon knew what he was talking about. But Gideon said to them, you watch me and you do what I do. Now, I got to tell you, from a pastor's perspective, that puts a lot of heat on me. Because I'm going to ask you guys, to follow me. I, I'm going to ask you guys to believe in my vision. I'm going to ask you all to believe in the battle plan that I believe that God is given to the church. I'm going to ask you guys sometimes when it seems like that we press and we press and we press and we push and you're looking and you say, preacher, we just can't do anymore. I'm telling you, we can defeat the enemy if we trust in God. So I'm gonna ask you tonight, if you're willing to follow God's battle plan. You see, because God told Gideon, he said, Gideon, there, there's a couple of things that, that I want you to do. First of all, Gideon, I, I want you to give everybody in the company, everybody, all 300 men, I want you to put a trumpet in their hand. I began to think about what that trumpet is. And, and the trumpet, by the way, uh, in the scriptures always is used to make a lot of noise. So here's God's battle plan for you all. 
I believe God wants you to make a lot of noise. I, I think, and, and I know that folks are going to say, well, the preacher, he's done already lost it. He's done already went off the deep end. But I'm telling you that I believe that we're living in a time when God's people and the church is quieter than it's ever been. I thought about, I thought about Sister Arella. And, and I couldn't remember. Crystal, you remember what the song was she sung the night? Huh? Oh. Is she singing here? Yes. When Greg asked her to sing, I, well, I, and, and that may have been, I can't remember, but I can remember this. We were in the middle of a service and the spirit of the God, of God was there. And Greg looked at his mom and he said, mom, can you sing a little bit? She kind of looked at him for putting her on the spot. You know, that Arella look that Greg had seen before. But then all of a sudden, her mind turned toward glory. All of a sudden, her heart began to stir. She began to sing. And as she began to sing, man, we only thought that the spirit was sweet in here till she began to sing. But when she began to sing, I believe that the angels in glory said, I recognize that sound. I'm telling you tonight, I believe that God wants the church one more time to lift up our voices and have a sound that is distinguished and a sound that is different from the world. And you say, preacher, what in the world are you talking about? I, I remember the time when testimonies used to ring the bells of hell. I remember a time when folks would get up and they would begin to sing and the Spirit of God would come. I remember a time when folks would talk about God and the tears would just stream down their face. But now we're so busy that we forget that God has given us a sound. I got to tell you, I believe God wants us to make a sound. And you know, individually tonight, God's battle plan, if you begin, you begin to talk about God, you, you begin to sing about God, something that, and I don't know where she's at, and it's probably good that I don't, uh, but she'll know who I'm talking about. Some of us can sing and don't, and I'm not fussing. Don't y'all get aggravated at me. But what I want you to understand, I believe that God has blessed this church with a voice. And I believe that the voice that God has given our church, that we ought to begin to lift it up. And I believe that when they sounded the trumpet, God said, he said, I, I, I want you to give them a trumpet, Gideon. And when I tell him to, Gideon said, I want all of you collectively at one time to begin to sound a trumpet. Now, now I, I'm telling you, I'm about to feel preachy because I begin to think much more now than just the church that we've got. But all over our country, I believe that God wants the churches one more time to understand that he's given us a sound. And the enemy said that we can't sing it anymore. In the book of Psalm, they said, how shall we sing? Sing the songs of God in a strange land. I'm telling you, we're living in a strange land. But I still believe that there are some Christians that are going to stand up when the devil says you can't, and the government says you can't, and our families say you can't. There's going to be some that are going to sound the trumpet and stand up for God and give that sound of distinction that said, I am a child of God. Amen, preacher. Amen. Young folks, I don't know where you're at in the crowd tonight, but listen to your pastor. You're going to get up and you're going to go into the schools and in the schools, they're going to tell you that you can't speak about God. I'm telling you tonight, you may not be able to verbalize and they may not want you to carry your Bible. But have you noticed tonight, I've not got mine out here, but there's still a word of God down on the inside. And if you'll carry God on the inside of you, there will be a sound that will be different than the world. Yes. They're yes. going to want our young people. They're going to, ladies, listen to me. I don't know where you're at in the crowd, but I can tell you tonight, you're going to grow up. You're going to get a little bit older. There's going to come young men that's going to start courting you, and they're going to want you to do things that are not right and pleasing in the sight of God. Now, 
Don't forget about your parents, but let's talk about God for a minute. They're going to want you to do things. And I'm telling you, you need to utter a sound out of your mouth that says, I can't go there. And I can't do that because God saved me. And I'm a child of God. And there's a different sound that's coming out of me than what's coming out of the world. That's a tall order. But it's God's battle plan. He didn't give them the trumpet in their hand just to have them carry the trumpet. I believe they was to make a sound. God didn't give you the voice that he gave. Young men, listen to me. I don't know which one of you it is, and it may not be none of you. It may be somebody that God sends. But one of these days, this preacher's going to get old. But I believe that when I do, God's going to raise up a witness that's going to come after me. And as long as God's got a church, he's going to have a man that's going to stand. And he's going to proclaim a gospel. And they say, you can't preach it like that anymore, preacher. If you do, folks are not going to come. But they called me this week and they said, preacher, I'm getting ready to go into a major surgery. Can you come and have a word of prayer? They didn't want me to go talk to them about the weather. They didn't want me to go talk to them about how nice they had been. They didn't want me to go talk about who's going to win what ball game. They wanted me to go and they wanted me to talk to my heavenly father on their behalf. I believe the world needs to begin to hear God's people speaking to God again. They tell me, they tell me that uh, folks don't pray like they used to. Well, I'm telling you, I still believe in the power of prayer. I still believe that when prayer is made, it changes things. But that, that, the Bible says that Gideon gave them all a trumpet. In the trumpet, they, they put it in one hand. And then in the other hand, the Bible said that Gideon gave them an earthen vessel, a pitcher, if you will. It was a clay pot. Just an old clay pot. Nothing fancy nothing pretty i went up today to marion and i began to look because i wanted to find an old clay pot i'm telling you it's harder to find an old clay pot than you can imagine i looked through the pottery and all of it was duded up all of it was pretty all of it had swirls and all of it was painted and i thought lord that's not what i want for tonight I began to look and I stood there and I stood there and all of a sudden I found this old clay pot and I know that you all can't see this old clay pot that I've got in my hand but the great news about it is you don't need to see it and you say but wait a minute preacher nope I've got to tell you when Gideon marched against the enemy it was as black as it is tonight and they snuck around with the clay pot in their hand they they surrounded the enemy. now I've got to tell you what the devil does not expect you all to go out into the blackness and begin to work he's happy if you're in the church you just you just have your few preacher you, you just stay there. Don't you come into my territory. But I'm telling you that God said in his word to go into all the world and preach the gospel, making disciples of all men in the world. It's going to be dark. Gideon gave them all an earthen vessel. Now, I want to tell you all about this earthen vessel because I want to tell you what the Bible says that it is. Over in 2 Corinthians, the Bible teaches me that all of us, every one of you here tonight, are an earthen vessel, a clay pot. Oh, by the way, in case you need me to paraphrase that, that means you're just a clump of dirt. <laughs> just a clump of clay. And I got to tell you, this clump of clay that I've got in my hand, it's not anything special. It ain't got no swirls. It ain't got no paint. It ain't got no flowers. It ain't got no handle. It's just an old clay pot. But then I began to think about me. I'm just an old clay pot. But this clay pot that Gideon gave them was just a little bit different. The Bible said that they put it in the hand. Gideon told them, he said, you watch me. You do what you do or do what I do. And I, I, I took today my clay pot the one i've got in my hand dies tough my mm, 
I know I need to hurry because it's got to be getting to 810. So I've got 20 minutes yet. And I took my old clay pot. I began to stuff it full of rags. You say, preacher, why in the world would you do that? Because I, I, I begin to think that the Bible teaches me that my righteousness is as filthy rags. So let me tell you what God's battle plan is tonight. God's battle plan is to take you as an old piece of clay and an old pot. All of the things that you've got. Now, I'm not talking about what's on the outside, but what's on the inside of you tonight. Those things that make you who you are. The Bible said that there's none good, no, not one. So I, I stuffed my old pot full of rags. And God told him, he said, get in. He said, when you get there, he said, I want you to break the pot. He said, you break the earthen vessel. When you do, that that's on the inside. You say, preacher, what is it? Well, I'll tell you what I took. I took a little bit of oil. Oh. It'll be all right. <laughs> took a little bit of oil and I poured it down into the pot. Poured it on the rags. Y'all notice it ain't as dark as it was? Mm -hmm. You know what that is? Listen to me. That's one pot. One pot. One filthy rag. Saturated on the inside. By the Holy Spirit of God. That, ooh, and I'm telling you what. That'll burn out in just a little while. But the oil that God saturated me with on the inside. And he put down on the inside of me a fire. And the Bible said, Gideon, he said, you sound the trumpet, you break the pot. And when you break it, the Bible said that the light was so great and the sound was so great that the enemy got confounded and they began to fall on one another. And it wasn't long that the enemy destroyed itself because of the few hundred that decided that they would stand in spite of the opposition. So I want to ask you a question tonight. God's battle plan is simply this. It's simply for you to be broken. You say, wait a minute, preacher. I don't like that idea a bit. I told you you wouldn't like it. But you see, as long as you're not broken, what's on the inside of you can't shine forth. As long as you're not willing for God to break you, what you got on the inside can't shine forward. So, I wonder tonight, well, that's burned longer than I thought it would. <laughs> I wonder tonight, if you're willing to be broken of God. And I don't know if I've got enough. I think I've got about 40 clay pots up here. Now, I want you to understand something else about these clay pots. When I say they're representative of who you are, they're not easily broken. Some of you all have been resisting God for a long time. And it's time that you allow God to break who you are. So, if, now listen, if you're willing tonight to be broken of God, to allow the Spirit of God to shine out of you, it will absolutely, absolutely destroy the enemy. And it's the only hope that our world has got. So if you'd like to be broken tonight, if you're willing to allow God to use you for His glory, you see, God told Gideon, I'm gonna do it this way, Gideon, so they'll know it's me. 
Are you willing to be broken of God so that when people see your lives, they'll know it's God? See, because it's not about us. His battle plan is simply to break us that he might receive the glory. You might say tonight, preacher, I don't want to be broken. Well, somebody wants to be broken. I'd like you just come get a pot and smash it on the rocks. Come get a pot and smash it on the rock. I already did. Come get a pot. You did last week. You're willing? Please. Andrew. Come here, Andrew. figure something out in a minute. Figure out yet? Wait, one more. Wait a minute. Ah. Go. Uh -huh. yeah, they'll get it, sissy. figured anything else about this flame yet? Has it gone on? Besides the fact that it's getting bigger? Have you seen have you seen what's happening here? There's more kindling to be wet. I want you to see this. You gotta see this. Where the clay pot, where the clay itself had absorbed the oil, even the clay is on fire. And because it is, the fire is spreading. Now listen to me. If you all are willing to follow God's battle plan, his battle plan is simply to build a church. But the way that he's gonna do that is one by one by one, when you guys make a difference because you're on fire for God. Those things that are in us, these little white pieces of paper that burn up so easy. Why, them's just filthy rags. <laughs> but the clay pot now, that's different. The clay pot, it'll take a while for them to burn. You see,
in the brightness of his glory. The Bible says that we have a treasure in these earthen vessels, and it is the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Now listen to me, and then I'll try to stop. Some of you that are saved, some of you that are saved have been sitting on the gospel. You've got it on the inside, and you're not letting it out. But God's plan to build a church is simply to take that that's on the inside of the vessel, saturate it with the Spirit of God, and then the Bible says that God would let that light so shine that all that see would understand that He's God. Amen. You see, this is a, a very simple illustration of a couple of broken pots. Some of you all figured out that sometimes when you go to break the pot, whoa, you miss. Sometimes being broken is not as easy as what that makes it look like. Sometimes being broken hurts. Sometimes being broken requires sacrifice. But God's, God's battle plan for Gideon was to break the earth and vessel, vessel and let the light that was on the inside shine out and it confounded the enemy. Some of you all, some of you all, you need to confound the enemy in your lives. The way that you're gonna do that is take that which God gave you down on the inside of your heart. And now I'm gonna ask you to do this and then I'm gonna close in a word of prayer. For all of you that broke a vessel, for all of you that said, I want to be used of God. For all of you that said, God, take what little I am and saturate me with your spirit. I want to ask you tonight, would you be willing? Wow. And there the lamp of God. And there the lamp of God went out in the temple. You see, guys, that right there, that wasn't part of my plan. I figured that thing would be, still be burning at 10 o'clock. It's all right, let it go out. <clears throat> Uh, you know what's amazing? A little flicker. Wow. There's just a flicker. And a flicker. And a flicker. And all of a sudden, you gather up those that have been scattered. Gather up them that have been scattered. <laughs> and look what happens. Now listen, your families have been scattered by the enemy. It's time for us to go gather them up. I believe that we're living so close to the closing out of time. Whether you believe that or not, you can't look at the world around us and not think that the days are evil. Because the days are evil, our families are being drug out, drug down, drug away. Time for us to let the light of God shine in our lives. There's your trumpet, Pastor. <laughs> and there's the trumpet. <laughs> Play it loud. Make a sound. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. I had a trumpet on my laptop I was going to bring down. I forgot it. God must have decided we needed one. <laughs> so, would you follow God's battle plan? Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. As long as we'll do that, there'll be a light. Amen, preacher!
So, let us bow our head in just a moment. Father, tonight, God, I know that, uh, Lord, sometimes, Lord, the things that you would ask of us, seemingly to us, Father, they make no sense. Lord, sometimes we look and we wonder, but then, God, you move in an amazing fashion and lives are changed. Father, I pray tonight, God, that as we've stepped up and we've begun to be broken, Lord, that we'd not soon forget this simple illustration. God, because it's what's on the inside of us that the world needs to see. So would you, Father, allow us to shine, to shine, to shine, that others might see and call upon you. Lord, because I believe that that is your battle plan. We ask you to bless to that end in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, where's Kyle? There. <laughs> do you remember enough? And if you don't, maybe some of the kids do. Do you remember enough of this little light of mine? <laughs> Sing it. Let's let the neighbors on Downing Road hear it. careful getting back to the church and uh, you know just follow the driveway we'll get the chairs you, you all uh, may the Lord bless you please pray take care of